Ladies and gentlemen all around the world, welcome to the next up with Dr. E. Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. E, the edutainer, and I'm so excited to be back with you today. So pull in close. Let's get in the boat together. And as I like to say, let's go out into the deep because there is more. Next up is really all about more. And as you've heard me share the last few weeks, I really want you, you to receive encouragement, edutainment, because we need education. Knowledge is power. And then we need empowerment. So let's do this thing together. Let's go into our next. So let's go into the depth of things that we need to share today. You know, one of the things that keeps amazing me as I think about it, ponder on it, and so forth, and that is we serve a creator of unlimited next. There's no end to his next. You know, scientists say the universe is still expanding at the speed of light. There's something next constantly coming from the imagination, from the might, from the splendor, the majesty, and the glory of our great God. That's why I want to be on his team. That's why I want to be on his side. He is the GOAT. He's the greatest of all times. Nothing and nobody can compare unto him. Isn't that exciting to know that you and I get or we have the privilege, oh my God, to have a relationship with him. The God of unlimited next. You see, what has been and what is, is not all there is to be. There is more. I'm going to say that again because I just felt that, and I pray that you felt it as well. What has been in your life, what is in my life and yours, is not all there is. There is more. Romans 15, 13 is one of my favorite scriptures. And here's what it says. Now the God of hope fill us. Notice the God of hope, unlimited hopes. Fill us with joy and peace in believing. And then he goes on to say that we may abound, increase in hope by the help of his spirit. I've got to say that again, at least that latter part, <laughs> that he wants us to abound in hope. You know, I looked that up a few weeks ago, and that word abound gives us the picture of water splashing all everywhere. You know, like being at a water park or children out in the yard, you know, playing with the water holes and the, the water's just splashing all over the place. That's what God wants for you and I. Hope that's just abounding, splashing all over the place. So much of it, you're just getting soaked. You're getting wet in the hope of something better. So there is something more. Now, as we talk about next, there is a next minute. There is a next hour. There is a next day. There's a next week. Think about this. There is a next. There's a next month. There's a next year. Your year may not have been all you want it to be, but there's a next month. There's a next week. There's a month. Next month, there is a next year. In a few months, we're going to be entering into the next year, 2025. Man, that sounded like eternity back in the 30, 40 years ago, or as we would begin to, as I began to look forward to the future, to hear the words or the uh, the number 2025, 20, but here it is a few months from now, we're going to be into the next year. So there is a next year. Let me give you hope. There is a next season for your life. The season that you're in, enjoy it. Get all you can out of it because there's a new season coming. If you'll notice, we're, get, we're moving right swiftly, it appears, 
into fall. So there's always a next season as well. There's a next phase in our lives. <laughs> I love it. Come on. Remember, go back. Those of us that are older, we can remember when we were in our teens. We were in our 20s. You know, we thought we were just the most brilliant people around in our 20s and our 30s. You know, some of those years we thought, you know, dad and mom, you know, they were not really all of that intelligent. And you hit your 30s, you figured that mom and dad, they knew something. You hit your 40s, mom and dad were brilliant. You hit your 50s, oh my God, you appreciated mom and dad even the more. What's happening? We're growing through phases. There's more. There is a next phase. Here's a good one. There's a next chapter. Now, what you don't want to do, something that I tried to do for a number of years, was to stay in one chapter. There's another chapter coming to your life. You keep looking unto him who is the author and the developer of your faith. You see, God developed us or created us to evolve. We are in an evolutionary process where things were designed really to get better, to become more mature. All right? We were designed that way. God wired life up design life with next in mind for things to get better. You know, we've heard this terminology, these terms, becoming a better you. Who doesn't want that? If you're in sports, if you're in business, whatever your career is, if you are married, if you are a, um, a man, whatever you are, whether you're a man or a woman, we all want to become a better version of ourselves. And we should want that. We should want to get better. So, but in order for that to happen, you got to turn to another chapter of times that happened to girlfriend and I, you know, girlfriend, my wife, she's my wife. I call her my girlfriend, not my old lady. She's my wife. In, in two months, we'll make 42 years. We've been together. And dear God, have I been growing. <laughs> man, have I, have I been growing to become a better man, to become a better husband, to become a better servant? You know, by the way, you know, I told my wife, you're never going to be better than me or greater than me. I'm not saying that she, she's better than me in a lot of areas, but she's never going to be greater than me. And I just caught that. I'm going to say that again. She's better than me in different areas, but she's never going to be greater than me. Why? Because I'm determined to be the greatest servant in our household. And you know what, right, frankly? She loves that. She's like, yeah, honey, keep on doing it. You want to be greater? You want to be a greater husband? Keep on vacuuming the floor. <laughs> keep on uh, uh, the, the carpet. Keep on uh, mopping the floor. Keep, yeah, keep it up. She loves it. You know, my wife told me one day, she said, you know what? You look real romantic. They're washing those dishes. I'm like, yeah, right. She sees romance in me washing the dishes. And see, I, I get crazy now. I'm aware. Sometimes she'll use that on me. She'll play those mind games. I'm like, whoa, whoa, hold on now. I think you're trying to play that mind game, or manipulative mind game on me. <laughs> You know, but we've learned to have fun. And this is why we've been together for 42 years. And she's my girlfriend. She's not my old lady. She's my girlfriend. And I want to do my part to make sure that this relationship thing stays exciting. You know, warm, comfortable, you know. Um, 
looking forward to the next year, the next phase. 42 years we've been around for quite some time now. There is a next opportunity. And what you're doing now really kind of prepares or sets the stage for other opportunities to come. You've got to know that. You've got to believe that. Going back to Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope. Hope has inside of it opportunities. I want to ask you a question and I'm asking myself the same question. Are you preparing for the opportunities? Because they're coming. They are there. Now they come in different forms. But you've got to know that there are next opportunities and get prepared. Now, we've already entered into a new football season. Now, those teams didn't get started preparing for the opportunity of a new season one week before the season got started. No, no, no. Many of them were thinking about the next season after the last season ended, a few weeks after that, they were already dreaming. They were already pondering. They were already envisioning. And you and I, we've got to do the same thing. You've got to use your imagination to think about tomorrow. You see, the memory kind of takes us back into yesteryear. But the imagination that Walt Disney said as long as man has imagination, Disney World will never be finished. Wow, what a statement. You've got imagination that God Almighty gave you that's part of his characteristic. You know, the Bible says that we were created in the image and the likeness of God. So we have his nature and we have his capabilities, you know, for our level of operation. Of course, we are not God. As some freaks say, I'm God. I used to work in the prison and there were guys in there who said, hey, I'm, I'm God, Officer Ellison. I'm like, well, what is God doing locked up <laughs> if you are God? But anyway, my point is God has given us his image we have characteristics like God, the ability to love, have joy, patience, you know, all the great fruit of the spirit, and they are powerful. God didn't give us anything that's not powerful. The fruit of the spirit, they are powerful. So we have God's image and we have God's characteristic. We have the ability that elephants don't have, monkeys don't have, gorillas Dolphins, none of those rest of creation has what you and I have the ability to create, to, to imagine and create a future so bright, you're going to need some shades to walk in it. This is what God's got in mind for us. You, have, you may have gone through a divorce, but God has a future for you. You may have lost a loved one, but still there's a future for you. And it's bright. It's brighter than anything you and I have encountered to this point. Why? Because we serve a God, a game of abounding hope. Hope splashing all over the place. Hope on the right hand and on the left hand. We serve a God of abounding hope. There's a brighter future. I understand life. I've gone through Job-like situations and circumstances, but I still realize what the promises, the purposes, the plans of God are. And inside of those plans, purposes, or whatever you want to say is hope. God said, I know the plans. See, even thinking about plans, hope is there. While you're planning something, or you wouldn't plan anything, if hope was not in view. So we plan because we have hope. So I want to stir you up all over again because I'm doing it 
to myself, stirring myself up. And I want to encourage you and motivate you to utilize the power of your imagination to create a future, to envision a future so bright, you're going to need shades to walk in it. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Now, I want to get to this next one. This is a very powerful one as well. Another powerful next. There are, it not just is, but there are next relationships. Whoa, whoa, what a big one. What a big one. Life is about relationship. It's one of the most powerful words in our vocabulary. And it starts with our relationship with God Almighty, the Creator. The relationship, the intimate relationship that He desires to have with each one of His expressions or children. All right? With each one of us. And the relationship is going to be to the degree because he's already done his side of the operation, but it's going to be as tight, as nice, as great as your willingness to invest in the relationship. All right. If you want more out of the relationship with God, you got to hunger more for him. You got to be like David was. David said, as the deer pants in desperation for the water brooks, he said, my heart pants after you, God. In other words, he was saying like that deer is looking to drink of the waters. I am looking to drink of you. Oh, glory to God. If you've ever drank a little bit of God, if you've ever eaten, you know, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. If you ever tasted just a little bit, you're going to want more. God is just that delicious. I personally love Banana nut muffins. Oh, I feel like I'm in heaven when I have that banana nut muffin and throw some honey on it. Oh, oh, you talk about having a ball. I look forward to it right there at the end of my meal as my snack. Now, I don't eat six of them like I used to do. Now, don't look at me funny because you probably used to eat three and four donuts like I used to do. You know, we just, I did some weird stuff. Maybe you didn't do it. You were perfect in the health area. Man, in my younger years, I'm thinking now like, what were you doing eating three, four, five donuts, creating the donuts as though, I mean, utilizing the donuts as though they were a meal. What were you doing? <laughs> but anyway, I don't know how I got way out there. Let's bring it back in to say God is more tasty than that banana nut muffin that I love with the fibers. You know, I've already kind of put my claim in um, and my request in, Lord, you know, when we hit that heaven thing, uh, make sure there are loads of donuts, uh, you know, warehouses of donuts loaded up um, for me where I can, you know, I can enjoy there what I enjoy in here. But let's get back. The relationship with God should be very tasty, very dynamic, very intimate. And out of the intimacy of that relationship, oh my God, connected with God, dreaming with God, working in coordination with God, there's not a reason why the imagination shouldn't be inflamed. No reason why we shouldn't be thinking about tomorrow while you may be in the midst of a Eurocladon today. You may be in the midst of a fiery furnace or a lion's den or a whatever. It could be a jail. There's no reason when you're connected to God not to allow the imagination to be stimulated, inflamed with pictures, images of a brighter future. Oh, my God. So the relationship with God is critical. Relationship with loved ones, they're critical. 
You see, relationships, think if the sun was not relating with its abilities to the earth. Earth would be frozen just like that. Think if the fish didn't relate to the water. Survival, gone, out the door, over. Think about what happens when the relationship is disconnected from the children or the children from the parents, you know, and around the basis. You know, we all work or should be working and working harder to develop good relationships. Let me conclude by giving you some thoughts about relationships. Well, before I conclude, I do need to take this brief intermission. I need to take this brief commercial and encourage you, subscribe to this channel, share, help us. We've been seeing the numbers grow and we appreciate you all that have been doing it and that you're going to do it even more and encourage your family, your friends, your enemies, your everybody to tell them there's a dude on talking about a big, a bigger, brighter, better future, pouring out encouragement, edutainment, and empowerment for us to utilize our imagination to dream up a world, a, a life unlike anything we've experienced up to this particular point. So make sure you subscribe and share, all right? Now, let's go back and come or go into the conclusion of today's talk. Relationships can be, number one, windows for insight. One of, the, one of my rituals is I get up in the morning and I go to just about every blind in the house and my wife is like, come on, honey, do you have to open every single one of them? But I go to the blinds and open them because I use that as part of my ritual, spiritually speaking, thinking about opening myself up to the brightness of the S-U-N coming in. But also I, I just translate that over to opening my spirit up to the brightness, the glory, and the greatness of the S-O-N, Jesus, the Son of the living God brighter than the, the, the noonday sun. So I, I use it symbolically, figuratively, to open myself up. So relationships can be windows of light, insights into things that we're not aware of. Relationships can be doors to opportunities. We all need opportunities, and opportunities are available but oftentimes you will find out in life, you just keep right on living, you'll find out that opportunities will oftentimes come through people. So people are like doors of opportunity. People are like bridges over waters. Now, unless the Lord would grant that to you, to walk on the water, now, I only know about one individual that did that, and that was Peter. Now, there may have been, I'm sure, probably some others, but it's not everybody that walks on the water. Israel walked through the water. And God will do things like that at times, too. He'll part the seas for you. But my point here is relationships can be bridges over waters, bridges over things to us that seem like impossibilities, but you engage somebody else's gift talent, ability, or purpose, they can help you get over what looks like an impossibility for you. I'm not an electrician. You don't want me working on the electricity wiring in your house. Trust me, you don't want that out of me. <laughs> but there's pe there are people in our world that have that grace, that ability. Relationships can be wins for change. <clears throat> Excuse me. They can help you in your change. Because, you know, a lot of times we like the, what is it, the um, caterpillar? We're, we're, we're in that cocoon. We're trying to get out of that last chapter. 
that last sentence, that last year, and it's a tremendous struggle, but somebody comes on the scene and helps you with the changes that you're trying to get through. Window, uh, relationships can be signs for directions. All right, let me say that one again. Signs, because it's critical to be on the right path, to get the right advice, to go in the right directions. Direction. So relationships can be signs for directions. Relationships can be counselors for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Then relationships, my last two, can be coaches for personal development and growth. We all need coaches. I used to hear that Tiger Woods would be out there at the top of the golf game and looking at his coach when he's getting ready to swing um, that golf club. We all need coaches. And lastly, relationships can be profits, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S. Well, you can profit, P-R-O-F-I-T, for relationships as well. But my last point is that relationships can be profits. God can send somebody and does send somebody in our life to give us a prophecy about our future so that we can have hope. So relationships can be prophets of hope. I hope, I pray you've been stirred up, you've been charged, and that you're excited about dreaming about tomorrow. What has been, has been. What is, is. But there's a next coming for all of our lives. I want to encourage you again to subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, share the link. Now, you can reach me by going to basically my uh, website, ellisonsconsulting.com. You want to reach me for a consultation in marriage, manhood, womanhood, health, or what have you. You can go there to ellisonsconsulting.com. And again, subscribe to the channel. Share the link. Love you guys. Looking forward to seeing you next time on Next Up. God bless. Have a great rest of your day. Ladies and gentlemen, all across the globe, you've been listening to Dr. E on Next Up. Have a great day. <laughs>